Take all of them you like, but hold on to those cameras and cell phones. Because it's a bumpy ride, they have to falls overboard, I cannot stop to get it. If by chance something does fall overboard, please let me know immediately so I can notify the warden and we can work on getting that back for you. But keep in mind, these are wild animals and they're very curious, so I cannot guarantee the condition of your item when you get it back. <laughs> Now here in Africa, we have a word, twin day. Twin day means let's go. So what are we doing? Twin day. Twin day. Twin day. I like it. So we are going to start off this tour here in the Little Lightyear Forest. Now in the Little Lightyear Forest, there are lots of places for animals to hide. So sometimes they can be a little hard to spot. Just keep those eyes open. Duck's not part of the tour, though. So. I'm just saying. Now he, he's hiding. Oh, there's one right there. Because there's one hiding behind the bush over there. But those right there, that's the Okapi. Now, believe it or not, he's the only known relative of the giraffe. Yep, has that same skull structure and prehensile tongue. He has those little knobbies like a giraffe. Yep. Up until 1901, he was thought to be a myth. Locals knew he was real, but Westerners had never seen him before, so they didn't believe it. For that reason, I do hold out hope for the unicorn. He's out there somewhere. If you look over to the left real quick, there's gray animals up there on the top of the hill that almost blend. Those are called greater kudus, and those are female greater kudus. You can tell that because, well, they have no horns. like coming up on the right hand side you're going to see these rusty colored animals or at least one that's a bongo also known as the ghost of the forest he gets that nickname because of that pattern on his fur it actually mimics the sun shining through the trees gives it that little added advantage of camouflage another unique thing about the bongo is both males and females have horns which is rather rare in the animal kingdom there he is look way back there on the left see him walking that's a black rhino Black rhinos are the smallest of the rhino species, oh, coming yeah, in here. at only 3,000 oh. pounds. Yeah, I said only. And I know you probably can't see it right now, but he actually has this cute little pointed upper lip that moves like a finger. And that's right because there. a good chunk of his diet is the leaves on right the trees there. and the bushes, so that helps him pull those off. Now the big black and white birds over here on the left, those are right. saddle-built storks. They actually get their names because they have a bright oh, yellow wow. saddle across their bill. They can actually get up to five feet tall, have a wingspan of about cool. nine feet. If you're cool. curious as to what nine feet looks like, can it be above your head is about nine feet wide, just to kind of give you an idea. Yeah, large wingspan. Now we're leaving the forest and entering into a little more of the wetland. This area is actually referred to as the Safi River. Now in the Safi River, we tend to find things like the Nile hippopotamus. The Nile hippopotamus will spend the majority of his daytime hours in the water and still not part of the tour. <laughs> She's doing her own tour. I like it. I, some of the birds are very pretty. You can't help but look at them, but they are native to Florida. There's a hippo right there. They're native to Florida and they won't go away. And my thing is, is if you could live at Disney, wouldn't you? So, you know. Okay. Now a group of hippos over here is called a bloat, B-L-O-A-T. Hang so right there, there my friends is a floating bloat of hippos. Try saying that five times real fast. Now on the island right here, you're gonna see those pelicans. Those are actually called pinkback pelicans. And they get that name because the skin underneath those feathers is pink. During mating season, it will become really bright pink and you can see it through the feathers. So pinkback pelican. Now, I do want to remind you to keep those hands and arms inside and remain seated because we're entering into crocodile country. Now, if you look over here to my left, right you're going to see the Nile crocodile. Yes, those are very real and very alive crocodiles. It's not the jungle cruise. They're real. Now, you see how his mouth is open right here? 
That is not an act of aggression. He is actually cooling his body temperature. Crocodiles are cold-blooded animals, and when they lay out in the sun like that, the heat builds up in their body. So they open their mouths, release the heat, and cool themselves down. Shame it's not that easy for us, huh? That would be wonderful. Now, another interesting fact about the crocodile that you might not know is they are exceptionally good parents. They'll actually carry their babies around in their mouths until they're big enough to defend themselves. Now, I don't know about all of you, but I personally had four daughters, and that would have made for a very awkward 18 years. Longer for some. My youngest, Lord knows I love her, but she's 28 years old. I still don't think she can defend herself. And I know there's parents that know exactly what I'm talking about. Yep, you don't have to say a word. We know. Now we are fixing into the savannah, but before we do, I want to point out this tree over here on my right. That is a baobab tree. And no, it is not upside down. That's its branches. It only produces leaves about three months out of the year in order to conserve water. It can actually hold up to 10,000 gallons of water in that trunk. That helps it and the other animals on the savannah survive during times of extreme drought. For that reason, it has been given the nickname, the tree of life. See the connection? Now you know why it's called the tree of life. Now it looks like the first animal we're going to come up on is going to be the zebra. Now these guys right here happen to be mountain zebras. And the way you can tell that is if you look close, their bellies are white. The stripes do not go all the way through. That's how you know it's a mountain zebra. Mountain zebras are the most endangered of the zebra species. And a group of zebras is called a dazzle. And he is always like that. I do not know why. Zebra stripes are also no two are alike. They're like a fingerprint. They may look alike at a glance, but if you really look close, you can see little notches and dips and stuff in the stripes that are different from the next one. Now, if you look over the hedge to my left, up in that cave right there, I'll get around here we see a little better. You're going to see the African painted dogs. They are one of my favorites, although I say that about a lot of, a lot of the animals. They get their names because their coats do look like they are painted on. They are very family-oriented animals. They'll actually get up in the morning and greet each other before they go out and take care of business. And they are also some of the best hunters on the savannah because they work together, catch their food, bring it home, and they'll actually make sure the sick and the elderly eat first. That's one of our lovely keepers that takes really good care of our animals. It keeps them healthy. Now also coming up on the left here, we got a couple of giraffes. By the way, a group of giraffes is called a tower. Yep. Um, before we get to the draft, though, just because theirs is a little longer, if you look right here in the sunspot by the palm tree back there on the hill, that dark brown animal, that's a sable antelope. He is actually the official emblem of the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. Oh, and this little giraffe over here on the right, that's a baby. Oh, I see him. He's about six, seven months old. So anyway, giraffes are the largest, excuse me, tallest animal in the world. They come in around 20 feet tall. Their babies are born around six feet tall and can stand within the first hour of birth. Now the reason for this is because a giraffe only sleeps for a whopping 30 minutes a day. That's it. And they do not normally lay down for that because of predators. So the babies need to be tall enough and able to stand in order to nurse. They also do not lay down to give birth because of predators. So the first thing that a baby giraffe learns about our great big world is gravity when he falls six feet to the ground tough little babies, right? And I don't know if you'll be able to see one, but if you ever catch a glimpse of one of their tongues, it's blue. The reason their tongues are blue is because they spend the majority of their daytime hours with their head up, tongue out, eating from the trees. So the blue tongue prevents it from getting sunburned. They kind of vary between like a blue, a purple, and almost so dark they're black. But they're definitely blue. Now, if you look straight out to the right, you'll see those little bitty beige guys out there. Those are full-grown adults, and they're called springbok. They get their names because they can literally spring six feet in the air from a standing position or 13 feet forward, and they can't do both at the same time. Kind of looks like a dolphin when they're cresting the water. The next animal, straight out ahead up there where the shade starts, those dark gray animals you see out there, those are wildebeest. You may actually recognize them from the Lion King. Wildebeest actually travel in packs of over a million. And if you wonder how you keep a million wildebeest together, there's some right here too. They have little scent markers in their hooves and as they run, it leaves a scent on the ground. So the last one can still find the first one. On a side note, 
They did not, I repeat, did not kill Mufasa. It was a trap. Who killed Mufasa? Scar did. Anybody? Scar, thank you very much. Scar. Had a lady on my truck a couple of months ago. I mean, she just, when we got to the Wildebeest, she didn't like him. They killed Mufasa. I just told her to go home and watch the movie again because she missed it, something in there somewhere. Because they would never have done that on purpose. They're sweet babies. to the right guys there's an african elephant over here see him oh yeah right there whenever you see them flapping their ears they are not trying to fly they are actually cooling their body temperature they can cool it by 15 degrees just flapping those ears if you look over here on the left up on the rock i see some and looks like there might be some in the trees those are mandrill monkeys that's the ones with the red and blue face and the red and blue bums like oh, yeah, right there. Rafiki, by the way, is Swahili for friend. Wow. So you are all my, my Rafikis. We do have a couple of babies, but they don't see them right now. I do. I one do. of them is Olive. Okay. She's actually right probably there. pushing she's, a year old. The her. other one is Ivy, and Ivy is literally just a little her. over a week old. Yep. Now, um, the African elephant and the mandrel monkey's habitats are actually being destroyed due to the mining of a mineral called Colton. Colton can actually be found in your cell phones, laptops, tablets, and home computers. Now, I'm not going to ask you to stop using those things because I like them too. But what I am going to ask you to do is recycle them, even the broken ones. Because what we've discovered is that Colton, it never goes bad. It can be reused over and over and over again. So simply by recycling all of your old and broken electronics, you can help save those habitats. Now, another reason why we need to do that is because the elephants have actually started encroaching on farmers' lands here in Africa and destroying the crops. The farmers actually reached out to Disney's Conservation Fund and asked for a little bit of help. So we did some research and found out that great big elephant is scared of a teeny tiny bumblebee. I know, right? So we got a hold of the farmers, told them to fence in their crops. Every so often, hang a beehive on the fence. As the elephants come up, the ground vibrates, the bees come out, scare the elephants away. Everybody wins, including the farmer who can now collect extra income from the sale of the honey. So it's a win-win and no one and no elephants got hurt. I like that story. If you look over here on the right hand side, you're going to see the scratch marks in that red clay. So the elephants actually do that because they eat that red clay. It has minerals in it they need to survive. Elephants also keep their young with them longer than most yeah. animals in the wild. They're actually a little more like us in that aspect. So females will stay with their mother for life. A male, though, will stay till he's about 15 years old, and then he'll go off on his own or he'll join a bachelor herd. So if you see a herd of elephant, nine times out of ten, they are all right female, it is, it is occasionally amazing. all male. And if they are mixed, the males in the group are usually juveniles under the age of 15. Then just past right. these palm fronds, it looks like we got some elephants. Right there. There you go. Like now, when we get out a little bit further, do you see the little bitty one on the other side of this big one? Yeah. Is that her? Oh, yeah, that's gotta be her. That's, and she's walking where we can't see her. That's Miss Stella. Miss Stella just turned four in December. Aww. And she is like, don't tell the other elephants, she's my favorite. She's so cute. She's like my own little version of Dumbo, you know? I mean, goodness gracious, she's adorable. Sometimes you'll come through here and she's got them ears standing straight out. <laughs> See, look at her. Look how cute. Oh, oh my goodness. There she is. One of my friends was like, I'd like to spend the day with Mac. Mac is our ginormous bull elephant. I said, no, 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 no. I want to spend the day with Stella. Now coming up on the left again, we have the greater flamingos. They are the largest and the lightest in color of the flamingo species. Flamingos do get their color from their diet, which consists mainly of brine shrimp. And a group of flamingos is called a flamboyance. 
I know, I didn't make them up, but yeah. Did I tell you what a giraffe was? It's a tower. Yeah. I, that's why I forget sometimes. That's why I recheck to make sure I actually told you because I'm not kidding. When I started working here and I was doing my training, I went home and checked because I thought they was playing a joke on me. Because I'm like, this can't possibly be the group things. I mean, come on. But they are. Some of them have multiple, but the ones I'm giving you is at least one in each one. Now, over to the left right here, you're going to see a mud hole. And I know you all have seen mud, you know, you know what it is, I'm, and animals cool off in it. But what you might not know is a lot of animals will roll it and coat their skin. It actually acts as a sunscreen and an insect repellent. Rhinos, for instance, have very thick skin, but it's actually very sensitive, and they sunburn very easily. So when you see the rhinos, they are usually coated in a layer of mud in order to prevent sunburn. So there literally is no such thing as an orange rhino. Except for maybe in my granddaughter's coloring book. It's just the mud. And I mean, in her coloring book, they could be green, purple, who knows? Anything goes. Oh, he's not there now. I come through here on the last round, and the cheetah was sitting pretty on that rock. I mean, beautiful. I think he's laying right back there, but I mean, he was sitting out. It was gorgeous, like he was posing. I always recommend two safaris. And this is why, because the animals are always going to be moving around, so different ones will be in and out. It's up to them. They aren't put on show. They're allowed to go wherever they want. So, you know, always take a second safari. No two are ever the same. You know, you take mine twice, it won't be the same. Guaranteed. There's one lamb back here by the fence, and there's one over here by the fence. Yeah, right so those, of course, are the cheetahs. The cheetah can go from zero to 60 in three seconds. That is not a myth. That is a fact. However, they can only hold those speeds for very short bursts. For that reason, they yeah, do their hunting yeah, during no. the day when their feline counterparts hunt at night because they're built for speed, not power. So this way they avoid the competition. Oh, look at right, right here. I don't even get a chance to start talking about the rocks, and he's right there. That is Drakari. Look at him. So cute. Aww. So, right lions there. actually sleep 16 to 20 hours a day. They do this to conserve energy for hunting at night. Ironically, the only ones who do the hunting are the females. The males hang back in the man cave, but they still need 16 to 20 hours of sleep a night. Go figure. Kind of sounds like my life. I actually was... Uh, recently learned that apparently their vision during the day is the same as ours. At nighttime, it gets six times stronger. I just found that really interesting because I would have thought it was six times stronger all the time. But apparently during the day, it's the same as ours. There's a female right here. There's, there's a, there's, there she is. And this little guy in the road right here, this little brown guy on the right, that is a Bantabak. He is actually in the same family as the wildebeest. He actually has a really cool story. Well, sad and cool towards the end. He was hunted almost to extinction for his coat. And when I say that, at one point, there were literally only 20, not 20,000, but 20, left in the world. One farmer decided to fence them in and protect them. And now their numbers have grown to the thousands. I love that because, I mean, it's just a good example of how one person really can't make a difference. There's the other female right there. Okay. I'll tell y'all a little secret I heard. So I heard, because there's two females and one male. I heard he likes one of the females. Okay. She doesn't like him. The other one likes him. He doesn't like her. So see, it's not just us humans that have that issue. It made me feel a lot better about my life. All right, let's see what we got going on here. There he is back there in the shade. The fuzzy warthog back there. See him? Yep, I see him. Sorry. Might seem a little better around the corner. But that is Pumbaa, the warthog. 
They are actually related yeah. to the pig, but I think they are much smarter. Right there. And that is a white rhino. He's fixed to hide on us. White rhino is the largest of the rhino species, coming in at 5,000 pounds. And where that black rhino had that cute little pointed lip, the white rhino actually has a wide lip because they're a grazing animal. And right there on the ground, those little white things, those are ostrich eggs. Ostrich eggs weigh about three pounds a piece, and they are equivalent to two dozen chicken eggs. Do you see the guy walking back there with a the target on his butt? Oh, he just went into the trees. It's a water buck, and he actually has a white target in his fur. I point that out because that's how they keep track of each other when they migrate. They watch the target in front of them. I don't know how scientists figure this out, but that's what I was told. And those ostrich eggs, like I was saying, a grown man could stand on top of one and do a tap dance, and it would not crack or break. Wow. Now, I was told it would take us a hammer and chisel to get into that egg, so here's what I want you to think about. How tough is that baby bird? I mean, come on, unless mama's helping it. That's one tough baby bird. Now, this area right here is called Magadi Glen, and it is a beautiful area. right on the outskirts of the village. But it does mean we are getting close to the end of our journey together. This right here is our warden's post. And if you look right out front, you'll see that yellow wooden triangle thing hanging there. That is actually one of the beehives that they put on the uh, farmer's fences to keep the elephants out. D well, uh, Disney's Conservation Fund actually donates the materials and the wardens and stuff over in the area build them for the farmers. The other thing I want to show you is these absolutely adorable little Nigerian dwarf goats. They are actually as big as they're going to get. They get about three feet tall. They can jump about four feet, but they actually produce a very nutritious Aww. and I'm told sweet tasting milk that helps the villagers to not have to rely quite so much on the wildlife for their nutrition. They can drink the milk or they can eat uh, food items that are made out of the milk, such as cheese and butter. They also sell those things to make a profit. Now here in Animal Kingdom and Kilimanjaro Safari is our number one goal is conservation. So I do want to leave you with a little bit of conservation information. First of all, friends, our rhinos are being hunted almost to extinction for their horns. Think of it is their horns are made of nothing more than keratin. That's the same thing your fingernails and your hair are made out of. So they have absolutely no scientific or medicinal value whatsoever. So what can you do to help? Well, word of mouth. Knowledge is power. The more people that know, maybe we can help save those rhinos from extinction. Also, those electronics we talked about earlier. Now, when you get back home to your local area, you can usually check around, find someone who will recycle them for free, because some people are going to try and charge you, but for the ones that do it for free. I've been told Home Depot, Lowe's, um, Best Buy, some uh, staples, and Target, believe it or not. So, when you get back home, check those out. Recycle those old electronics, help save those habitats. Now I do need you to look around, make sure you gather all your personal belongings. Check the seat and the floor, because it has been a bumpy ride and you would be surprised at the things that fall out of your pockets and you don't even notice it. We find wallets, keys, cell phones, sunglasses, money, credit cards. Yeah, it really would not be any fun if you got all the way out to your car and realized you left.